draw a gravity uterus with the placenta and the fetus. That understanding is very, very important to remember. This is a gravity uterus with a baby amniotic cavity. The green is the amnion, red is the um, placenta and the black is the, the whole membrane. That whole membrane means uh, amnion and chorion or let us take uh, the chorion also I have to draw. The, what I am drawing now as blue, Abhijit. Sir, uh, chorion, sir. Super. Because chorion is not a epithelium. Chorion is a connective tissue. When there is a pregnancy delivery, uh, the baby will come out with the umbilical cord. Isn't it? So yes, we sir. Will, we will remove the baby now. And uh, there will be a rupture of this uh, umbilical cord will be there. The baby is uh, delivered. You are receiving the placenta along with the membranes. So baby is given to the mother and placenta is given to pathology. Here you can see some membranous portion in relation to the placenta and some membranous portion away from the placenta. So these are known as membrane leeway. Over the placenta is known as a more uh, functional placenta. Functional membrane over the functional placenta. Why it is important? The placenta is sitting on the endometrial side. It is not coming into the myometrium. And when it comes into the myometrium, there are three diseases you have to remember. Whenever there is a placenta, at the junction of the placenta and the myometrium, we get the deciduum that you have to remember. This yellow color is the decidua. And the decidua is there throughout the uterine body. And the placenta can be at the myometrium without the decidua or it can go into the myometrium uh, without the decidua or it can perforate the myometrium. So when the placenta is at the myometrium with, uh, without decidua, it is known as placenta accreta then placenta in creta and then third is placenta per creta. If it is at the myometrium without decidua, it is a creta. When it is in the myometrium, it is in creta. When it perforates the uterine wall, it is per creta. Why placenta is very, very important organ? The placenta gives immune tolerance. We, we have to know that for transplant setup. You remember many transplant the organs are rejected. If you know how the placenta is giving immune tolerance, that mechanism we can apply for all transplant, uh, organ transplants. And uh, we are thinking it is delivery at the 40th week or uh, in the third trimester, isn't it? It is not delivery. At that time, the immune tolerance is switched off in the placenta. So the baby is rejected from the mother. Have you all heard of preeclampsia and eclampsia? If you examine the placenta of those patients, there's a lot of vascular changes at the decidual blood vessels. These vascular changes are very similar to transplant rejections. Vascular rejections of kidney, vascular rejections of the liver, they have the same picture like preeclampsia. So what they are telling is preeclampsia is premature switching of the immune tolerance. What is the to treatment for uh, preeclampsia or eclampsia? You have to take the baby out. The minute the baby is taken out, mother become all right. Eclampsia, preeclampsia is gone. Placenta is in red color and umbilical cord, uh, amnion. Blue color on the corium. Are you all able to understand what I'm uh, drawing here? Yes, yes, sir. So the placenta is now having two surfaces. One is fetal surface because this is the where the fetus is there, isn't it? So this is known as fetal surface and this is known as maternal surface. And as I told you before, maternal surface, you get the decidua and spiral arterioles. Fetal surface, you have the amnion, chorion and the major blood vessels that are coming. This understanding is very, very important. This is how you receive the placenta other than the part of the baby. This is the umbilical cord. Maternal fetal surface, maternal surface, uh, the umbilical cord and membranes. So when you are grossing, 
the membranes uh, you take a section and uh, give card you and give two sections and grossly you see th there are three blood vessels that is very important to identify grossly because sometimes it will be two vascular two only two vessels there and the placental parenchyma to give you a section like this okay so that you can see the uh, the fetal surface placental parenchyma and the maternal surface that's how we have to give sections of the cord and before that you measure the length of the cord and then cut the cord and the membranes and you measure the weight of the placental parenchyma without cord and membrane this is the fetal surface this is the maternal surface you can see the spiral arterioles and this is the placental parenchyma in the placenta this is how the parenchyma this is how villi will look okay and uh, when you go to the previous picture these are all villi and uh, these are all the inter uh, villus uh, inter villus spaces whose rbcs are these and whose rbcs are this this rbc and this rbc the, that understanding is very very important these are maternal rbc these are fetal rbc for example diseases of the maternal rbc malaria in the rbc affect ago parvovirus infection in the rbc infect and the villi are lined by two types of cells uh, single layered uh, uh, cells these are known as cytotrophoblast clusters of uh, giant cells syncytotrophoblast and uh, as the villi are maturing these blood vessels will come to the periphery remember like a lung there is oxygen transfusion and uh, carbon dioxide uh, diffusion has to happen in this area that's why the blood vessels has to come closer remember we can date the placenta also and we have to see is there any inflammation in the amnion and chorion and when you see neutrophils you have to see the neutrophils either in the amnion or in the chorion depending upon the amount of neutrophil and presence of neutrophil only in the amnion and chorion the chorioamnionitis is uh, graded and uh, staged Uh, finally breast as i told you breast is very similar to prostate they are all arranged in lobules and again same thing two layers of lining epithelium in this picture they are not shown it to you clearly all these glandular spaces are uh, having two layers of cells one is uh, secretory epithelial cells other one is the basal cells see a lot of proteinaceous material in the glands these are nothing but lactating uh, glands you can see the Uh, proteinaceous material here what cell you can see here da i think there are here few of them three or four plasma cells can be there within the stroma of the lobules okay to secrete the iga and another important thing one point you have to remember here the stroma in the lobules stroma inside the lobule is different from stroma outside the lobule so this is intra lobular stroma this is interlobular stroma in case of postmenopausal females uh, both will look alike whereas in uh, premenopausal females also both will look alike in females with the reproductive cycle the intralobular stroma will be different from the interlobular stroma